Hello, I'm Artiki or Arti, and I'm going to be the head coach for the JTS program in this coming fourth term. I'm making this video to try and share with you my philosophies on volleyball coaching and hopefully give you a few tips that you can take into the fourth term and um, be successful at running sessions. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to start off with sharing my philosophies. Now, I have two main philosophies that I can put in words and that are important to me. The first one is it's got to be fun. What you're running must be fun, okay? Now, this isn't like the, oh, the last rule is you gotta have fun. It's sort of like, if this isn't fun, kids aren't gonna enjoy it. That means kids are probably gonna leave. Now, there's a study that's run by a few different volleyball groups in America that say the biggest reason kids quit isn't because they lose every week, it's actually because they're not having fun. All right, now, some people may define winning as fun, but I don't. You know, kids are kids and they enjoy playing and learning. Let's keep it fun. Now, the second main philosophy of mine is it it sort of revolves around the idea of you get better at what you practice. Now, if you get your kids to run around the court, they're probably going to get pretty good at running around the court. They're probably not going to get too good at volleyball. Do you sort of get me? What I'm talking about is I want you guys to try and emulate the game. Now, when I say that, I mean, in particular, use the net, okay? There's so many times that I see different coaches sort of not use the net. They're playing volleyball and they ignore the net for 15 minutes of their um, training, which is um, just funny to me. So what I want you guys to do is emulate the game, all right? In any way, try and include that net. Try and include digs, sets, spikes, serves, blocking, Volleyball. Include volleyball. Emulate it in every single drill we do. Alright, now I'm going to run through how I would run a session for the first time with new kids because I'm going to be running into a few new kids as well. Now, the first thing is setting boundaries. Now, I know we're coaching volleyball, but we also need to be aware that we're also sort of managing kids. And some kids aren't the most self-controlled beings on this planet. So... The first thing I would do is set boundaries. Because if you don't set boundaries, those kids are gonna find the boundary probably in the most annoying way possible. <laughs> so, these are the three boundaries that you guys can use, or you can make your own boundaries up um, however you feel. Okay, I'm giving you guys quite a bit of freedom. You guys can do what you guys think is best. But these are three ones you can build off. Okay, so one, be respectful. Two, be safe. And three, do your best, okay? Now, if you see kids testing the boundaries, you can just chat with them, check in with them and say, hey, I've got an expectation that you need to be safe. So being a bit rough with other kids probably isn't following that expectation. How can we sort this out? Okay? Don't just yell at them. Hi, you piece of rubbish. Oh, whatever, I don't know. Um, you don't want to be that coach. So yeah, just check in. Check with the boundaries. If they can't follow those boundaries, just keep them accountable. Or you can bring me over and I'll um, talk to them. The ne very next thing I would do after setting boundaries is I would try and learn all their names off by heart. Now, the best way to get someone to sort of respond positively to you, especially with kids, is learn their name. All right? You, like, if so a kid does something awesome and you want to sort of praise them, they're probably not going to listen to you as much if you don't know the name. If you're like, hey, good job, buddy. Um, or if they're doing something silly and you're like, hey buddy, um, can I talk to you? They're probably just gonna ignore you, to be honest. So learn their names, that's the first step to sort of gaining that respect from them. Now after that's done, that's when I get into my debrief of what we're doing in the training session. Now the way I do that is I always have a whiteboard marker and most of the time there's whiteboards around where you can write your plan on it, okay? Writing your plan down doesn't only help the kids and the players to understand what they're doing, where they can make a roadmap, it also helps you make a roadmap for the training session, okay? There's so many times when I haven't written on the board and then I'm sort of like 15 minutes in, I'm like, oh God, what do I do? I got no idea, oof. And then precious time is wasted, okay? So to be efficient and effective, try and get a whiteboard marker and just write your plan down what you're gonna do. Now, I do simple things like 1v1, 2v2, 
Monarch, and then game at the end. Okay, something as simple as that. And then I add the important sort of ideas that I want to share with the students. It keeps you accountable, and it also tells the kids what they want to do. Imagine if you went to a training session, nothing was on the board, and they were just like, okay, let's go. You'd feel a bit lost. Um, so yeah, it helps kids, helps you. It's good for everyone. Okay, I'm gonna put the main technique keys that I've come up with down in the um, description and you guys can read over those. If you have any questions, shoot me a message, come talk to me. Um, I'm here to support you as much as possible. I'm also going to add all the drills and the sort of activities we're gonna be running down in the description. Um, if you have any questions on those as well, just come and talk to me. Now, the main thing I wanna add about the drills and the activities we're running is I want you to manipulate them and modify them to sort of best suit you. When I say that, what I mean is I want you to modify bonus points and priorities within the game. Now, if you're playing a half court 2v2 and you're focusing on serves, easy. Add a bonus point to an ace. That's forcing them to think about trying to get an aggressive serve. It's not saying, hey, you need to do it, serve aggressively. It's saying, hey, if you serve aggressively, you get some extra points, all right? Try and make it competitive and try and add that little bit of incentive for them to wanna um, get better in that sort of thing. Now, you could add that to anything. Bonus point for blocking, a kill block. Bonus point for a dig set spike. Now, it doesn't just have to be one. If, you're, if you really wanna like nail it home, you could say, hey, you get five points extra if you can serve and ace them. It really pushes people and gives them agency over what they wanna do and what they wanna learn. It's not them just getting told what to do when they're doing it. It's them making the choice, hey, I'm gonna do this. It's sort of like a better learning environment, in my opinion. All right, so, um, each week, I'm just gonna put the same sort of drills and activities down, and I'm gonna give you guys the freedom to put those together however you want, okay? The resources are gonna be there, and I'm just gonna give you guys freedom as coaches to put in what you think is necessary. Now, each week, I will release sort of a lesson plan with the focus of what we wanna do, but I also, want you guys to try and put things together and see what works, all right? It's okay to fail. Um, it's part of the learning process. And do your best. If you have any questions, come talk to me. Um, if you're feeling worried, come talk to me. And I'm gonna be around supporting you guys. So I think it's a pretty good learning environment for you guys to give it a crack and see what happens. Hell yeah. All right, let's get into it.